Welcome back to TechFlick. We are gonna do an overview on this all-in-one CPU cooler and also I'll go through my build experience with it. Let's roll the intro. Alright, so this Castle 240 RGB version 2 all-in-one CPU cooler is manufactured by a company called Deepcool or sometimes referred to as Gamer Storm. Take note that this is the second version of this particular model. It comes in at 118 Singapore dollars, that is around 85 US dollars. The pump and the fans included are both RGB and you can control the lighting with the use of software control. Just make sure your motherboard comes with a 3 pin digital RGB header and supports one of the following software. Now let's take a look at what is included inside. All the items are packed in this simple molded cardboard inserts. It comes with two RGB fans, a thick accessories box which we will take a good look at them later on, and of course the pump and radiator itself. Checking underneath the cardboard, there is nothing else included. Alright, so let's take a look at the fans and accessories provided. It comes with two 120mm fans. The fans are knife bladed with the deep cool logo in the middle. The corners of the fans also comes in this grey anti-vibration padding. It comes with two connectors. One is to power the fan itself while the other is to power the RGB lighting. For the accessory pack, it comes with the mounting solution for both the Intel and AMD sockets. It supports a wide range of sockets, even an AMD's TR4 socket. Don't be overwhelmed by the number of items inside. You will only need to use those necessary items depending on the socket of your motherboard. In another accessory pack, Deepcool has conveniently included a LED hub which can connect up to 6 LED connectors including the pump LED. The LED hub is pretty flat and it comes with a pre-applied double-sided tape for mounting the hub on your case. Deepcool includes two different type of 3-pin digital RGB connectors for different motherboard brands. So check your motherboard 3-pin digital RGB header to see which connector to use to control the RGB lighting using software control. However, if your motherboard does not support a 3-pin digital RGB header, fret not, Deepcool got you covered with a remote control button for you to toggle the mode and speed with it. Deepcool even includes a fan hub which can support up to 4 fan connections. That's very cool of you, Deepcool. Oh, and don't forget, it also comes with a manual which I find is very useful especially for preparing the mounting bracket for your socket and connecting the fan and RGB connectors. Now, taking a look at the pump and radiator itself, the radiator is made of aluminium and it comes in all black. It comes at a length of 282mm, width of 122mm and a thickness of 27mm. I was actually impressed to see that there is no dents on the radiator fins, everything looks pristine. So something unique about this radiator is that it comes with an anti-leak technology painted by Deepcool themselves. It is this a rubber sack at the corner of the radiator which acts as a pressure relief device adjusting the pressure in the radiator. This in turn avoids leakage and prolong the AIO cooler lifespan. I will leave a link to this technology in the description below for you to find out more. Coming out of the radiator are two tubes in black. I feel that this tube is kind of short as it comes at a length of only 380mm. However, they are braided and they do feel rigid and durable. Now onto the pump, it comes in this metallic grey look. On the side of the pump, there is two black wires protruding, one for the pump and the other for the RGB on the pump. The top side of the pump is made of this mirror finish, pretty reflective and below the mirror finish is where the RGB will light up. We will look more into how the RGB is implemented. The pump has a copper base and it comes with pre-applied thermal paste. So you are not required to buy a separate thermal paste, that's pretty helpful. Now, the pump comes in at a height of 91mm, which I feel is pretty tall compared to other AIO cooler. However, it's not that tall as compared to CPU cooler heatsink, those can be quite tall. But here's a comparison of the height of the pump with the Intel stock cooler, so you can roughly gauge how tall it is. Alright, so how does it feel building a PC with this AIO CPU cooler? First up, there was no issue when I mount the two fans onto the radiator. Here you can see that I'm going for a pull configuration. You can also choose to mount the fans on the other side of the radiator too. I just had to use the screws provided to screw the fans in place. Mounting at the front of the case was also pretty simple with the screws provided. Within a few minutes, I have finished mounting the fans to the radiator and the radiator at the front of my case. Next, setting up the mounting bracket is also straightforward. Depending on the socket that you are mounting to, the method I use here may differ. Here, my motherboard is an 
Intel Z390 and it comes with LGA1151 socket. I just had to put in the screws on the designated holes followed by slotting a black clip to secure the screws in place. Next, I had to remove the plastic cover that protects the thermal piece and I had to mount two metal brackets on the pump itself. Again, this is also based on the socket of your motherboard. For the metal brackets, it's basically just screwing them onto the pump. But be careful not to accidentally touch the thermal piece while doing so. If you follow the manual correctly, the bracket should go through the four holes at the back of your motherboard smoothly. Once the bracket is in place, I simply had to mount the pump onto the brackets and screw it into place. I did this by holding the bracket at the back with one hand and while the other hand, I screwed the pump into place. Now, this is where it gets a bit tricky for me. Connecting the RGB and fan connectors onto the RGB hub and fan hub. I had to constantly look back at the manual for this part, but thankfully, the manual provides a simple and clear diagram on how to connect them. I will briefly run down the steps I took to connect them. So as you can see, this is the same diagram that you will find in the manual. Here, you can see the two fans. Now we are first gonna connect it to the fan hub here and the RGB hub here. Each fan has two wires, so I connected the four pin fan connector to the fan hub first, followed by the three pin RGB connector to the RGB hub. Now that it's all connected, I then connect the connector from the fan hub into an extension and that extension goes to the four pin fan header on the motherboard, which looks something like this. Next, I connect the wires from the pump itself I connect the 4-pin pump connector to the 4-pin pump header on the motherboard and the 3-pin RGB connector to the top of the RGB hub. Now, at this point, you have three options. The first two options is to connect it to the motherboard if your motherboard has a 3-pin digital RGB header. You will be required to make use of either extension and your header may look something like this or something like this and it all depends on your motherboard. Now, if you don't have a 3-pin digital RGB header, you can use the third option, which is to connect it to the included remote controller, which can adjust the mode and speed of the RGB lighting, but you have to connect the remote to your power supply via SATA connector. All right, once all is connected properly, you are good to go. Now, the, both the fan and RGB hub do come with pre-applied double-sided tape for you to stick them anywhere in your case. But for my hub, unfortunately, the tape was not sticky so I had to reapply a double-sided tape to make sure that the hub sticks to the case securely and does not drop, something to take note of. I really like that the hubs are pretty flat and thin and I can mount them at the side without having any issue closing the side panel. Also, I did play around with the RGB lighting on the pump and fans using the MSI Mystic Light software. And the software control works flawlessly on the AIO cooler. Here's some example of me using the MSI Mystic Light to control the color and mode. You can see the visor effect, breathing effect, strobing effect, steel effect, color cycle effect, and rainbow effect. Overall, this all-in-one CPU cooler has plenty of great features uh, such as the included fan and RGB hubs, its anti-leak technology, and also a beautiful RGB implementation on the pump and fans in my opinion. You should, however, take note of the length of the tube, which I feel is kind of short, especially if you're using it on a longer or taller case. I also feel that the pump height is a bit taller than most AIO CPU cooler, so do take note if you're building a small build factor PC. All right, so that's it guys for this all-in-one CPU cooler overview and build experience. I hope you find this useful and as always, if you like what you see, click the like button. If you love what you see, subscribe for more future tech content. This is TechFlick, signing out.